Can you really be an authoritarian communist dictator if you don't own a golden AK-47? I would say no, personally. I, I don't think that's really possible. All right, we're strong enough we can start to expand a little quicker here now. So when we get the political power, we're actually going to go ahead and go for neo-imperialism, which for us will just be wars of communist expansion. So I think we might maybe go into we go to Bulgaria or something. We'll keep going down. We just purged the government. We just purged a bunch of people. So now I have to decide next. I think the next step, obviously, as uh, Alika Papariga would want to do as the newly installed communist dictator of Greece, would be to silence the press because um, they don't they don't need to be uh, here. I don't think we are not tyrants. We are liberators. If the media is too brainless to realize this, we shall take the matter into our own hands and we will. So uh, the press has two options. Get behind us and do whatever we tell them or we'll fucking shoot them and their families. Those are their options. So I think they're going to be reasonable. I hope so. For the sake of their loved ones, you know, we may be a strong evil dictator, but we're not, you know, Heartless. Well, that's not true either. So in a role play, you know what's going to happen? Alika Papriga is going to show up at every single media company's headquarters in Athens with a modified golden AK-47. And she will present them with an offer. Become part of the KKE Media Corporation that obviously does whatever we tell them. Or she'll open fire. Because, you know, she's a very hands-on woman, right? Alika Papriga, she, she's not the type to delegate these sorts of things to other people, so she puts in the work herself. Lukashenko got re-elected. Re-elected. There's, there's definitely real elections in Belarus. That's, that's definitely a real thing. They definitely have those. Aha! He's right! We got it! <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Thank you, Note. Appreciate you, man. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. There it is. It's exactly what I thought it would be. The hammer and sickle with a Greek flag. That is fucking beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. We have a actual communist Greek flag. All right, we have silenced the press. We have silenced them. They were bitching at us. Oh my God, look at that political power gain. Jesus fucking Christ, man. I think it's time to probably... Hmm, what do we work on next? We'll make the farmers love us and we'll make up for a militarist education. So... No, I think we need an army first. Farmers or army? We'll do army. Reorganize the army. The current army still holds an embarrassing loyalty to the old constitution. We'll have to reorganize our army and we'll get rid of some of our generals. But that's fine. That is acceptable. It'll make the military not like us as much, but that's good because it reduces the nationalist outlook increase. You should have free elections. People deserve to vote for their leader. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Marxist-Leninism only, only works with a strong authoritarian leader. Or basically Stalinist communist Greece at this point which does make sense because again we are in let me reiterate the fifth international of Russia so it makes sense that we would be heavily influenced by Russian communism so because we are working alongside our dear friend Zuganov we're helping to rebuild Europe with him a better Europe a communist Europe we will work on article 50 in a little while but I'm not going to rush it we can just continue to sabotage EU policy well, we're still in the EU if they haven't kicked us out. A Red Army. We will ensure communist spirit is present deep within the ranks of the new Red Army. This ideological fanaticism will be used to our advantage as it creates an army loyal to the state, specifically to Papriga, and an army that will fight until the end to preserve communism in Greece. Wonderful. All right, we've reorganized the army, so we had to break it and rebuild it. Kind of the theme of this game, I guess. Or the theme of communism in general. You have to break it to build it. We're going to purge the unions now. The unions have been very, very aggressive. Well, face a revolution. I'll be fine. Purge the unions. The labor unions have shown an inability to show restraint or loyalty. Our courtesy only extends so far. Yeah, so we've gotten to multiple events where they threaten to pull support from us if we don't do what they want. I think dictator Alika Papariga, in her glorious uh, authoritarianism, would probably break them. So we're, we're going to purge them. We should restore Colosseum fights. In this game in Athens, I'm not opposed to that. We can make the guys. I've got a new idea. So we're debating what to do with those bankers when we purge them. Right now they're in re-education camps. So you know what we could do with the bankers? I think you can probably guess what I'm about to say. We could put them into the Athenian Colosseum and make the bankers fight. We, we could we could turn the bankers and the capitalists into uh, gladiators in the Athenian Colosseum. 
Yeah, let's, let's do it. All right, we're, we're going to send all the capitalists from the re-education camps to the Colosseum now. To entertain the good working class people of Greece. Alika Papriga will preside over the the uh, the gladiator fights in Athens. She's going to bring them back for entertainment, you know. Bread, bread and circuses, all that, right? It's important. It's important. European communists. Communism has left a mark on the Balkans ever since the end of the USSR and the fall of the communist bloc. Perhaps with enough power and political intrigue, we can reignite the torch left behind by our comrades. All we need is a spark to ignite the fire. Wonderful. We'll get a very nice modifier when we take this. All right, we elected all communists to the European Parliament. Wonderful. We get a we ex get to extol the virtues of Marxism and Leninism before the European Parliament all the fucking time. That's that's perfect. You have 2,600 hours in Paradox games. Let me add up all my Paradox hours real quick. It's going to be really bad. And it doesn't even account for all my offline hours. Or when I may or may not have illegally played these games when I was very poor. Let's look. 7,000 hours? Oh, fuck, man. I didn't, I didn't know it was that bad. That's 7,000 hours. No one saw that. I didn't see that either. I, I'm, I'm gonna, you know what I'm do with that information? I'm gonna lock that away really deep in my brain and never think about it again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna compartmentalize that really aggressively so I don't have to come to terms with that. That's like a PhD. Look, we don't have to think about it. I just said it. We, we don't have to think about my crippling paradox addiction. We, we don't have to, we don't have to do that. Jesus Christ, man. I didn't know it was that much. It's fine though. I mean, like when you when you spend your leisure time doing things, you you do what you enjoy, right? And I enjoy strategy games. It's honestly one of the hobbies I enjoy most. I mean, I like to work out. I like to read. I like to trade stocks. I like to follow news. I like to do political shit, organizing and stuff like that. But I'll be honest, the thing I enjoy doing most in my free time is strategy games. Clearly, clearly, right? I mean, it's just what I enjoy most. Because I love strategy games because it, it combines like politics, history, economics, and it's very mentally engaging. Like, I like to do things for fun that make me fucking think, and there's nothing that does that more than strategy games. I've said that before and I'll say it again. So, all right, we have increased consumer confidence, so we are now in an economic boom. I didn't even have to pay for it. And we are going to launch our invasion of Macedonia, once we're not trading our divisions here. Some of these, like, I can't sustain, so we'll, we'll get rid of these. We don't have any helicopters, so we'll have to get rid of those. How long to the German election? Uh, it's in April of 2005, so I'll let you do that math. I, I don't like to do basic math because I'm a humanities major, and it uh, it hurts my it hurts my brain. So I'll let you do it. All right, we'll go ahead and puppet Macedonia, and now we're prepared to go into Yugoslavia. I want more marine divisions because we're gonna launch a two-pronged invasion of Yugoslavia. We will push through the mountains of Macedonia, and we're gonna launch a naval invasion to take the port at Podgorica. So, we'll, we'll work on getting our sieves to start with then. Pharmaceutical exports. Greece is a proficient name in the pharmaceutical trade. It is a second largest export industry we possess besides petroleum refining. Exporting these products has accounted for 20% of the industry's profit. Additionally, because we export these products internationally, the economic problems at home will not affect the ability of people to buy them overseas. So this will help with the debt crisis too, which we've already eliminated due to uh, putting all the capitalists and bankers into the Colosseum fights in Athens, which we are still having. Several of them have died, but... It's for the people, so who cares? All right, let's work on corruption now. We'll go down as many levels as we can now that we've saved up to max. Currently, for the roleplay, Alika Papriga is walking through the government buildings of Athens with her golden AK-47, executing any individual who has been known to do any sort of corruption in Athens. So the way that we've managed to get rid of almost every single level of our corruption, actually every single level, is again, Alika Papriga, our glorious leader slash dictator, is walking through the all the bureaucratic buildings in Athens, executing people point like just everywhere. Because again, guys, she's a hands-on leader. She's not a delegator. She does things by herself. So she is single-handedly destroyed corruption in Athens. There's there's a lot of dead bodies and there's a lot of blood to be cleaned out from the Athens government buildings But in the end of the day, we don't have corruption. So I see that as an absolute win. I mean who wouldn't? Alrighty, um, are we ready navally? Yep, we're good to go 
They literally, the AI fucked up. We're gonna be able to literally just walk past the fuck, because they death stacked all their units. Oh my god. I mean, I'll take advantage of it. The AI wants to be stupid as fuck, we'll let them. Oh my god, they're literally just gonna let us walk into their capital. You know what we'll say happened for the lore? We'll say that we were in contact with former communist sympathizers in Yugoslavia, including in the military, who we convinced to do basically like border exercises over here. So the whole military got put onto border exercises in one place. So we can literally just walk past them. That's what will happen to lore instead of just having an AI glitch that we had. There we go. That's a GG, boys. Yugoslavia has capitulated, and we will, of course, pop them. We're just, we're just collecting puppets in the Balkans now. Gotta, gotta catch them all, you know. Wonderful. We can't do any more expanding in the Balkans, because everyone else is democratic. Which means, that's this thing, if we invade a democratic country, they'll join a western faction, so we will get absolutely destroyed. So, we've done all of our expanding we can do here for a little while. So we get to work on annexing our vassals now. Construction materials. Our nation produces quite a bit of construction materials that we could use to expand our own economy. True. We are looking very strong. All right, we need to work on starting to try and annex Turkey now. So we're going to start building in their country. Alrighty. What else do we want to work on now? We are running a surplus so we can start to spend better on policies. I think we'll go for this next. Did that break the bank? It did not. We'll go for universal healthcare. Also, not that expensive. And I guess we'll go for universal welfare when we can, too. Welfare will be the expensive one, but we can't actually afford it, so... Yeah. We'll max out all welfare state now. And then we'll go to police state, too, because obviously... Alika Paparica will need a very strong intelligence network to be able to keep herself in power. So... Let's we'll max out all our policies, which we can't afford to do now, which is wonderful. Can you really be an authoritarian communist dictator if you don't own a golden AK-47? I would say no, personally. I, I don't think that's really possible. Fine, right, we'll, we'll go for it. Expand the ELVO. ELVO stands for the Hellenic Vehicle Industry, and the past ELVO has had very ambitious projects that had to be cut due to short funding. Due to our lagging military production, it may be time to make sure the ELVO has plenty of funds. Yeah, sure, we'll do it. Neo Nazis versus Communists, how history repeats. Now that's beautiful. Yeah, there are there are a lot of uh reappearing themes, aren't there, in history and politics. It's almost like humans don't learn from their mistakes or something. That's really weird. I wouldn't expect that. Ever. Ever. We can, we're gonna work on Article 50 here. We're gonna go down to subsidize the arms industry, and once we're done with that, we're gonna go for Article 50 so we can start the process of leaving the EU. We'll go for that. Does anyone have a good name? What should we rename the M4A ones into? Does anyone have a good name for that? We're gonna rename the M4A ones into something more communist. If anyone has a good name, I'll change it. The Papriga Popper. That's a good one. That's that's similar. Yeah, I like that. The Papriga Popper. Let's go with that. That's that's too good not to do. That's way too good not to do. <laughs> God damn it. Papriga Popper. Nice. 10 out of 10. We are running a surplus. Holy shit, we're actually running a surplus, boys. Look at that. It only took five years for the great government to get out of the debt crisis. Well, no, we, we dealt with that several years ago when we uh, put all the bankers and corporatists into the re-education camps, after which, of course, we put them into the Colosseum in Athens. Currently, in order to provide bread and circuses for the working class in Greece, our glorious leader, Alika Papariga, decided to reintroduce Colosseum fighting in Athens. So we put all the capitalists and the bankers into the Colosseum fights, which is what they're still doing. It's a price to pay for the Grand Navy, aggressive neutrality. Guys, we don't invade other countries. Let me make that clear. Communists, we don't invade other countries. What we do do is launch preemptive defensive wars, okay? We launch preemptive defensive wars. There's a difference, we're not invading. It's a prevent preemptive defensive law, and it's it's very different. It's very different. Not to be confused with wars of aggression. We do, we don't do this. All right, now we are chilling. We will now we're gonna go for Article 50. So we'll do EU four uh, EU policies, and that'll get us down to Article 50, which will allow us to begin the process of leaving the European Union, which we voted on earlier to do. Constitution. We got rid of that. There's also that. We we literally don't have a constitution. You know what we have, boys? Hold up. Let me find it. 
this is this is our constitution right here guys this right here is our constitution except instead of him it's it's our glorious authoritarian communist dictator the golden ak-47 it's basically the communist talking stick if you don't have it you don't have any political power just saying it's a prank bro exactly uh, we can do that we can start justifying on uh on america and then just send them like a, a news message that it's just a prank i'm sure they understand america's so understanding when it comes to their national security like they're just, they're just really chill about it they're very understanding they don't ever blow things out of proportion ever so i'm sure it'd be fine all right what do we want to work on next we'll go ahead and do the farmers We'll subsidize the farmers since they have been our biggest supporters during the communist revolution. European farms have been declining due to numerous factors. However, one of the largest is because competitive competitivity. Is that a word? Well, the United States is very challenging. We must assist our farmers in an attempt to stop these continual decline. I guess despite being communist, we do export our products. So hell yeah. All right. Well, we wait for the poll to be done. We're going to go ahead and go down more of our focus stream. I think we're going to go ahead and do former tax cuts. We must grant exemptions to our farmers to not only encourage more people to join the profession, but also make sure that they gain a larger profit, allowing them to expand their crop production with more efficient production methods and even more land. Fuck yeah, we'll do it. The farmers have treated us very well. They have been the best allies of our glorious leader, Paparigat, so we will give them all the benefits that they deserve for being behind us all the way. Unlike the goddamn military, which didn't support us when we were purging the non-communists. We are up to 700 billion in debt right now, so we need to find a way to reduce that. Probably austerity, but it's kind of kind of lame, honestly. Fucking austerity. Up to 1.3 trillion GDP. <laughs> Boys, look at our GDP per capita. Oh my God. We are a super, super wealthy country. The average GDP per capita is 115,000? I think we may have the highest GDP per capita in the world. And they say communism doesn't work. It is! No, it's not. God damn it. No. We're, we're, we're fourth right now. Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, and Monaco all, all have higher GDP per capita than us. But of the major countries on the planet, we have the highest GDP per capita. Alright, no deal. We will do a no deal withdrawal from the European Union then. That's what we're going to do. So once we're done giving the farmers tax breaks, which I guess you could call corruption, but we don't have corruption anymore. And if you say otherwise, you will be put in a re-education camp and or the Coliseum. So don't say that. But we, we are giving them tax cuts. When we're done with that, we'll do a no deal exit of the EU. So we'll do that next. Hellenic Armed Forces. The Hellenic Armed Forces, comprised of the Hellenic Air Force, the Hellenic Army, and the Hellenic Navy, have played a vital role in defending Greece. While we still hold pride in our military, it has not aged well. Whether it be the equipment or the doctrine, the Armed Forces need a serious overhaul. She likes the grind. I mean, RuneScape is literally just the grind. RuneScape is just Sisyphus incarnate. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's just rolling a boulder up the fucking hill with nice cosmetics and quest lines and actually occasionally a very good story but still it's 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 rolling the boulder up the hill change my mind the hellenic navy the hellenic navy is by far the most powerful branch of our military but it is slowly aging due to equipment and manpower shortages as you can see we have no one to recruit into the military currently reforming the navy could allow us to possess the strongest fleet in the mediterranean you're damn right we will do it Turkish naval race. Our historic rival Turkey is modernizing its navy at an alarming rate. They're also our vassals, so it's not an issue. Which would threaten our position in the Mediterranean. If we want to challenge Turkish naval dominance in the Mediterranean, we need to modernize our navy. Joke's on the focus tree. We already vassalized them, and we're going to get their navy when we annex them, so... Just kill the U.S. True. Guys, why have I not completely conquered the whole planet in seven years? Honestly. Just unacceptable. Unacceptable. Look who it is. Oh, no. It's him. Okay. To the, to the NSA agents who just joined this chat, I'd like to say hello, and that I love my country very much. Very much indeed. All, all this, it's, it's all a joke. I'm a strong capitalist. I believe in uh, beating up poor people for fun and for the establishment of a, the corporate fascist state. So don't worry, I'm, I'm all good, guys. Just heads up. Zach, out of one of your mods, who do you like more? Oh, I'm not answering that. That's literally, that's literally the fucking, uh, that's how the Trojan War started. That's literally how the Trojan War started. You're not going to give me that, Nathan. No, absolutely not. Wars have been fought for similar concepts. I'm not doing it. 
As a non-Greek, I'm legally required to subsidize. <laughs> God damn it! Subsidize the Greek economy. God damn it! He's reviving the Rust Belt. <laughs> that would never happen. Republicans would never invest in their Rust Belt. My immersion is completely ruined. Guys, I think we have to quit this game. This just broke my immersion. The Republican Party is not only investing in the domestic economy, which doesn't happen, they're reviving the Rust Belt. This this is just... I've seen a lot of unrealistic things in Millennium Dawn, but this, this is probably the most unrealistic thing I've ever seen, to be quite frank with you. That's just... that's ruined my immersion. It's absolutely ruined. Alright, I think we're gonna be about ready to call this uh, Greek game for the day. Because we're kind of at that point now or we, we gotta sit tight and do a lot. Like we, we gotta we gotta rebuild our navy and we have to basically just wait a while to be able to expand and do anything else. So I think this is a good way to do it. Like whenever I do the Million Dawn games, I like to do it in kind of like chapters like this. So I think we're gonna probably call this for here.